Okay, so today we will talk uh, about what is new in Creo Simulate Live in 7.0. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, what is Creo Simulate Live? Uh, what is it and why should I care? So we'll talk about what's new here in just a minute, but before we do that, we should probably get a better understanding of what Creo Simulate Live is and uh, why would I wanna use this product and where does it fit in in, in my overall design uh, process? So. It's a tool, first of all, that's gonna help you get a deeper understanding of the product performance uh, and uh, reduce design cycle times, potentially reduce the number of prototypes that you have to make, as well as help you get a better understanding of warranty liability and exposure that you might have, and then you know help you reduce the exposure that you have there. And ultimately, we're, we're always looking to decrease time to market. So it's an additional design uh, development tool that you have that will help you with, uh, with these items. So some of the challenges that typically come up when you're doing a uh, product development and specifically a uh, simulation part of the process is uh, you often need to find a, uh, an expert, somebody who's an FEA guru, uh, who's, you know, you, you have to find time on their calendar and get the product to, or your, your project set and ready to go. Uh, and you know, there's challenges associated with that. Oftentimes you can't use the actual design model that you've you know, modeled up in, in Creo. You might have to do some uh, simplifications, uh, you know, you know, take out some geometry and, and sort of just make it easier because there's just a whole lot of extra detail in there that you just oftentimes don't need, you know, like fastener connections, bolts and nuts and washers and all the things that hold your, your assembly together. And you couple that with the thought process that this is really an iterative sort of process where you, you're going to make an a, a initial design and then you might do some simulation on that and then you figure out where you need to make some changes, then you go back and refine your design and you, you just keep rolling through this process you know, again and again until you either get where you need to go with your design or you run out of time and you have to release the product to market and you, know, you just don't get to an optimum design as often as you possibly could. Well, so what Creo Simulate Live really is, is the result of a partnership between PTC and ANSYS where uh, the, some of the ANSYS simulation tools have been integrated directly inside of your Creo parametric environment. So what we're talking about here is the integration of best-in-class uh, simulation software along with best-in-class design software. Uh, and we're combining those capabilities into an integrated environment and getting it into the hands of designers and engineers so they can utilize this early on in the design uh, product development process. So we think about this from the standpoint of uh, initial concepting and then you, you do your design and in some cases you do some simulation. Uh, and what we're talking about here is the, the, the process and where does this, uh, you know, the simulation tools fit in. So first off, we talk about Creo Simulate Live and that really is, is more um, for early on uh, process development. Uh, our product development, things uh, you know, in the concepting through the early to mid phases of the design. So before you get to prototyping. And so the thought process here is that uh, we're looking for a quick and easy way to get information back from the simulation to figure out, uh, you know, am I going in the right direction? I'm looking for concepts uh, and, and am, am I designing things and moving in the right direction relative to the performance of the model and allowing me to do what if studies. What if I change this? How does that impact the, the performance of the model? You contrast that with Creo simulation, right, which is also used for early on in the design and development process. But here we're looking for um, high fidelity, high accuracy simulation, uh, where you'll do things like refining the design with sensitivity and optimization studies uh, and, and those types of things. So the idea here is that you, you use Creo simulate live early on in the design process. Uh, you'll still get accurate results, but the, the, the difference here is that you're really using this more as a general guide or like a compass in terms of navigation to help you understand, are you moving in the right direction with the different features and the design elements that you're bringing together into your model? Whereas Creo simulation is going to be more like a GPS that's going to tell you you're exactly here and you get um, high accuracy um, simulations. And again, you could do things like sensitivity and optimization studies to help you really focus in on, on what the, the, the ultimate design is going to be. So really, um, you, you're looking at um, speed of simulation versus high fidelity uh, simulation. Um, and, and you have the two different tool sets that allow you to accomplish that. So that's really uh, Creo Simulate Live in a nutshell. Again, it's not intended to replace Creo Simulation, uh, but it's intended to work kind of hand in hand with, uh, with the, the, the application, right? So uh, different tools for different parts of the process. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about what's new in Creo 7. 
So first up uh, is the ability to define the uh, forest or load relative to uh, several different options. Previous to CREO 7, we had to rely on the global coordinate system uh, and its orientation to help us uh, with the application of loads. Well, now in CREO 7, we've got some nice new functionality that let me specify uh, either directional components or a magnitude and a direction. And I also get to pick which coordinate system, so I'm no longer locked into just using the global coordinate system. I can also select a direction based on the surface uh, that I'm applying that load to, and I can uh, use that to help me define um, the orientation of, of, the, of the load. So again, uh, the nice new capabilities here relative to how the uh, loads can be applied to the surfaces. Uh, again, this is just a slide that sort of builds out the information I just talked about, right? So in this case, I can select any different coordinate system. So typically, we would be working off the global coordinate system here, but in this case, we, we can additionally specify a, a new, a new co coordinate system that I can create on the fly if I choose, right? So I don't have to have that built ahead of time. I can create that on the fly while I'm applying the load inside of Creo Simulate Live. Other new nice things here in Creo 7, we're looking at an enhanced legend. So um, what we're looking at here is very quickly and easily being able to toggle between uh, stress versus deformation. It's just a simple drop down uh, in, in the legend window. And there's other nice things here relative to uh, the different types of things that I want to display. Do I want to look at the out, outside surface of the model with the results there? Do I want to look at the inverse surface or basically the inside of the model? Uh, I can look at, uh, you know, continuous shaded, or I can look at banded plots. And again, all these options are available here from inside of the legends window uh, with little drop downs. So again, very nice and easy. I don't have to go back and edit the definition of a window or anything like that. It's just uh, right there at my fingertips, uh, right inside the legend. Another uh, new functionality here is the ability to use behavioral modeling studies. Uh, so what I'll do here in this case, is I'm showing that there's a, a measurement that's been created. Uh, I'm looking at the global max stress uh, in the model, and I can uh, actually do a, a sensitivity study and say, well, what if I change the width of that uh, uh, little hanger bracket, and what does that do to the resulting stress in the model? So that's what you use behavioral modeling for. I can say, let's change the width of that bracket or that hanger from, let's say, two and a half to four uh, units, and what happens to the resulting stress in the model? Well, I can create a measurement probe in Creo Simulate Live and then run a behavioral modeling study on that to actually get the results and plot that out and see what happens to that model as I, as I uh, make that change. So again, it's helping me get insight into the performance of the model um, without having to go back and run several different iterations. I can do that all very quickly inside of Creo Simulate Live and behavioral modeling. Additional functionality, uh, we now have um, more types of constraints. Um, prior to CREO 7, we were pretty limited in, in the number of or types of different constraints that we could apply. But now we have real world uh, type constraints, uh, things, like, things like a ball, uh, ball joint or a free joint, uh, very similar to what you're gonna have for the, um, the CREO simulate functionality as far as the uh, uh, different types of constraints that we have. So again, additional functionality for that. So those would be a cylindrical support. Uh, we have a ball type support or a planar type support. Again, just different types of constraints that I can have. New in CREO 7, in general, we have uh, support for multi-body design. So what we have here is uh, the ability to use different bodies inside of our model uh, that allow me to do things like boundary conditions. So I can use uh, a body to apply a load or constraint to the model, uh, very similar to what you might have done if you're familiar with Creo Simulate, in that you can use a surface region or a volume region for the application of a load or constraint. Now in Creo 7, we have the ability to work with multi-body designs, and I can use those bodies for uh, the uh, application of boundary conditions. Also new in CREO 7, transient thermal studies. So the types of studies that we can do in CREO Simulate Live prior to CREO 7 were uh, linear static analysis, we had a, a modal analysis, and we had a steady state thermal analysis. Now in CREO 7, we have the ability to do uh, transient thermal analyses, and I can look at the results and sort of uh, uh, look at a particular time slice or a particular step where, uh, where the results can be calculated, or I can just let that run in a continuous sort of um, uh, time frame to see how the model is going to uh, perform and behave uh, over a period of time. Also new in CREO 7, brand new type of simulation. 
So again, in pre-06, we had three different types. We had structure, modal, and thermal analyses. Now in CREO 7, we can do fluid simulations. So either with internal or external flows, I can define this flow simulation. What we're looking at on the screen now is a screenshot of, um, of a, a, a section of a pipe with a valve, and I'm looking at the flow through that. So I'm defining my uh, flow conditions, what the, what the inlet uh, pressure or flow rate is, and I can also apply temperatures there, and I define my internal volume where the flow, fluid is going to flow through. And so again, I can uh, see that nice simulation of that fluid flow through that valve assembly. We also have the ability to create fluid domains. And what this is, is really capturing the inside volume of that object. So I don't have to necessarily create that as a separate part uh, and, and assemble that in. We can automatically you know, calculate the, the interior void of, of an assembly and then use that as the fluid domain. In this case, we're looking at sort of a, uh, some sort of an electronic component where we have a, an inlet and uh, we'll have it automatically calculate where the, the void volume is inside of the, that assembly. And we'll have an inlet pressure and temperature condition and see the fluid flow, the airflow moving through that assembly uh, and, and see what happens as a result of uh, uh, that inlet condition and, and the components heating up. And so here we can also apply a material for the fluid domain. So here um, I can define, um, this might be a volume feature, a quilt or top level node of a part or component in the assembly. And from here I can assign different material properties to that. So um, it might be uh, air, it might be oil, it might be water, what have you, right? So you have the ability to define the materials for the fluid domain after it's uh, been created inside of the model. As I mentioned a, a minute or two ago, we have the capability for doing both internal and external flows. So here's uh, some screenshots of uh, different uh, flow simulations in Creo Simulate Live. Uh, we can see the exterior flow around the vehicles and the interior flow uh, being set up there in that ball valve. Well, so we'll see what actually happens as the fluid flows through that, that valve condition. Looking at the flow results, lots of different ways we can look at that. We're going to have uh, the ability to do streamlines and cutting planes and particles and, and, and all kinds of nice results that we can look at there as far as seeing what happens to um, the, the fluid as it's flowing uh, over the vehicle or through that, uh, that ball valve assembly. So um, you can control the width, uh, the size, uh, step size, the length and the tail uh, of those different uh, streamlines the size of the, of the particles and all of those types of things to help you get a real good in, in understanding of what's happening through the flow of the uh, assembly. Some additional items, uh, we have the ability now to um, show and hide the different um, constraints, the boundary conditions. So that's gonna be available for you in the ribbon. Uh, as a command, you can just you know, toggle those items on and off. They're you know, great and super helpful while you're defining your boundary conditions, but once you, you're done with that and you wanna look at results, you wanna turn them off and get them out of your way. So you've got, got the ability to do that with this uh, simulation objects display, turn that on and turn that off as you need. You also have the uh, nice preview of the boundary conditions. So you'll have the arrows that kind of point towards the surface or, or away from the surface, depending upon how you specify your loader, your, uh, your, your condition on that. And you also see nice information there as far as the surface ID, so you can make sure that you're actually selecting the right uh, the surface there as you're defining your boundary conditions. So again, you can select the direction here as we're highlighting, pick the direction from that, and your, your load will be applied in a uh, normal to that surface, for example, and you can change that orientation relative to the world coordinate system or the local coordinate system as you choose. Uh, another type of uh, uh, functionality that we have that's new in Creo 7 is the ability to apply a, a acceleration or an inertia load in a specific direction that you specify. And so we have this uh, option to, it's just a different type of load that we're going to have. So you can just go ahead and pick on the surfaces where you want to apply that uh, based on which coordinate system, and then you define the, uh, the magnitude of that. The other thing that we're showing here in the bottom of the slide is something that was new in Creo Simulate Live in 6.0. Uh, is the uh, ability to, to you know, generate results on a certain limited number of components, right? So what we're talking about here is the scope of where are the uh, results going to be calculated. So what we're showing here is we have uh, the selection of several different parts, and we're going to include those in the scope for the simulation study. So here we're presenting results on, on just uh, you know, three of those components instead of all of the components in the assembly. If that's really where you're interested in seeing results and you don't, aren't necessarily too concerned about the other items in that, uh, assembly, you can uh, configure 
uh, Creo Simulate Live to show you the results just on that one uh, subset of the components that are there. And again, you define that with the uh, simulation study, uh, you select the scope, and then pick the parts that you would like to have uh, included for the simulation. And then finally, uh, we have the simulation display results for Creo Simulate Live. Um, again, it's uh, new in information in the legends there that allow me to control what's being displayed. I can uh, do that either with streamlines or pick the surfaces I'd like to have that apply to. Well, do I want to see that uh, uh, on a composite or uh, on the outer surface of that, for example? Other different types of things I can look at um, would be things like flow, velocities, pressures, temperature, and vortices that are occurring as a result of my simulation. And the legend values can be dragged, right? So uh, we'll show you this live, but in, inside the legend values, <coughs> excuse me, you can um, you know, use a little dragger, a little handle inside of the legend to control the, the, the display of the fringes and the banded colors inside of your display sort of dynamically. So you can uh, get a better feeling for what the you know, um, ISO surface is for the um, item that you're uh, presenting results for. But again, it's, it's um, hard to describe in a word uh, picture, but when you see it live, you'll see that it's very intuitive. You just work with the Legends uh, dialog box or the Legends window, and it's very easy and intuitive to control the display of the items on the screen. All right, so um, different um, display types here. We've I've mentioned this before, but just as a quick summary, um, uh, you can look at the results in a cutting plane through the model, and you can then drag that plane back and forth. So it's sort of like you're sectioning through the model, and you'll be looking at the results of that flow simulation as you section through that model. Additionally, you'll have particles. Uh, so it's uh, like you've opened up a box of ping pong balls and just kind of thrown it at the assembly and it'll, it, the particles will show the, the, the direction and, and, and uh, magnitude of the pressure or velocity uh, of the item that you're, being, that you're displaying. So you'll, you'll see that as a collection of uh, little particles. And of course, you can control the size and, and the, uh, uh, the, the different parameters of those particles. Direction field uh, creates sort of a whole image at every step. So what you can do there is you basically slice through the model and you'll see the direction field. Again, it's very much like a cross section through the model to show you what the fluid flow looks like um, as you drag that, uh, that uh, direction field up and down through the model and around to see the flow around the object. Finally, a simulation probe. Um, that's just exactly what you think it is. You place a probe on the surface or any location in the model where you'd like to find information. Uh, track information about the, the item that you're displaying. Um, so if it's a pressure or a temperature or a stress, and you'll use that simulation probe um, to track uh, the specific measurement at that location that you specified. All right, with that, let's uh, go right into Creo Parametric and show you a little bit about what this stuff looks like live. So I have that bracket part that we were looking at a minute ago. Let's go into Creo Simulate Live and uh, just go ahead and take a look at the, some of the setup, right? So I've already got uh, constraints set up, so I'm just gonna toggle on the simulation objects display. So in the in, in, uh, interest of time, I've just defined my boundary condition there. We're gonna hold on at those four circular uh, locations for both. If I wanna apply a, a force load, I can do that, right? So very much like before, I'm just gonna pick the face here that I wanna apply that to. And if I wanna uh, pick a particular direction for that, right? So I can pick either a magnitude and a direction and with this, the, the two radio buttons here, allow me to toggle back and forth between that. So if I have, I have a magnitude of, let's say, 100 newtons, and then I just need to specify a, a force on that, or a direction, rather. We'll say we want to apply that in the negative uh, y direction. We'll go ahead and say uh, negative 1 in the y direction. And I can see there that that's relative to the global coordinate system here. So again, that's using this coordinate system here as our basis for reference. If I'd like to create a new coordinate system on the fly, I can do that. I can go back into the model tab and I can say, let's create a coordinate system. And let's just pick uh, this surface, this surface, and this surface. And that'll give me a coordinate system here, right? So uh, nothing different there. It's just that we're creating this on the fly. And notice that the orientation for that, the y-axis is normal to that surface. Right? And then now I can specify, I wanna pick a different coordinate system, right? So I'm gonna go back here and we'll pick the, a different coordinate system that I'd like to, to use for the orientation of that. And now just with the selection of that new coordinate system, that force is gonna be applied in the negative Y direction because I specified negative one for Y, but I'm looking at a new coordinate system here now, not the world coordinate system. So that's, that's the cool new stuff in, in, in Creo 7 Simulate Live is that it's really easy to, to generate or select a new coordinate system uh, for the application of loads. 
a lot of times in, if you don't have that ability, it's very difficult to get a load applied in the direction that you want because the world coordinate system might be pointed in some crazy orientation and you have to do a matrix uh, transform or whatever to get you back to the, the direction that you want. Additionally, if I set that back to, uh, if I reset that, um, what I can do then is uh, just set that back to the, to the global coordinate system. And then if I wanna pick a, a select a particular direction, I can do that too. I can pick on that surface. And as soon as I pick on that surface now, notice that because we're using the world coordinate system and if I select the direction, it's automatically converting that back into the appropriate IJK or orientation vectors relative to the world coordinate system that will give me that orientation uh, that points in that direction. So again, uh, pretty easy to toggle back and forth between the different options for the creation of that uh, load that's being applied. Okay, so we go ahead and accept that for right now. We'll go ahead and just uh, run that. So there's our load that's being applied. Uh, actually, I wanna change the direction of that. So let me go back and modify that here. Uh, go back into Creo Simulate, and I wanna change the direction of that load. So let's edit that. And I just wanna flip that here. We'll pick on uh, the coordinate system. We'll pick on this guy right here and we'll flip that to be in a uh, zero and negative one and then zero, right? So that's the load that I actually wanted to apply. Now let's go back in and, and run our, our simulation on that. So again, here's the results of that. So now we can see that that's, uh, that's a result. So here's the, the, the point here is I wanna get to this um, legends box so we can take a look what's going on here. So right here, I've got the options to specify what do I wanna look at for results? Do I want to look at stress? Do I want to look at deformation? Right? Do I want to look at a local force reaction? Those types of things. So it's really easy for me to just toggle into the different options that I want to display. Uh, here's the different options for controlling what am I displaying. So in this case, I'm, I'm showing the results on the outer surface. Maybe I want to look at the inverse surface. That's going to be on the inside surfaces of that, basically. So it's kind of like you're looking inside the model. Uh, if we look at composite, for example, that's going to give me this uh, sort of display. And this is what I was talking about before. I've got this little band that I can stretch, right? So I can control how the results are being displayed and I can set sort of a threshold. And then I can drag this up and down to show me what's actually happening in the model using this little slider to control what the display of the, the item is. So we'll go back to the standard surface uh, on that. But the idea here is it's really easy to show the results in a lot of different ways and, and get a real good understanding of what's happening in the model by just manipulating what's uh, being displayed in my legends window. If I click here, that will give me the maximum and minimum values, right? So my maximum stress value is going to be at this location. Minimum value is going to be down here at this location. So I can toggle that on and off. If I want to toggle back and forth between sort of a banded plot and a continuous uh, shaded plot, right? So that's just a little toggle button there that flips me back and forth between those two different options. Okay, um, the next thing we could do is we could say, let's actually uh, go and create a simulation probe. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'd like to create a simulation probe. And instead of creating on point, I'm gonna find the maximum value. And what I'm searching for is I can pick on a particular surface, but really, really what I want is to find the, the global maximum. So I'm gonna just pick on the part and then we'll go ahead and save that. And that's gonna save this off as my um, static uh, von Mises stress. And we'll save that. And so this becomes a saved measurement then that I can do other things with, right? So now we can go ahead and take a look at the, the, how this interacts with behavioral modeling. So for example, if I wanted to do a sensitivity study on that, keep in, keep in mind here that the current uh, von Mises stress right now is about 400 megapascals. If we go take a look at our analyses and let's look at a sensitivity study. So let's take a look at what happens if I make some changes to the model. So I'm gonna go pick on the geometry here and I'm, gonna, I'm very interested in changing the width of this and changing the width of this hanger from, let's say, two and a half to four units wide. And I want to plot out the parameter. This is just the probe that we just created right here. So I want to know what happens to that stress value as I change the width of that. And I'm going to just do that in four steps. And we'll go ahead and say, okay, Creo, go ahead and compute that for me. What happens as a result of changing the width of that? And so what it's doing is basically running a study at each one of those steps. And I can see that as I make that um, protrusion wider, it, uh, the stress goes down, right? So I can go ahead and say, well, what actually happens at this location right here? I can get a value for that, so that's 399. If I go back here to this location, click on that, it's a little bit less, 338. If I come back over here and look at that location, it's gonna be uh, 296. So that's my, my sensitivity plot and how behavioral modeling can be used in conjunction with 
uh, the, the, the results probes from uh, Creo Simulate Live. Okay, let's take a look at another type of study. Let's go back to our, our Creo Simulate Live and let's create a new study. I'm just gonna turn off that uh, results display here for just a minute. So we'll go to our saved analyses and let's just hide that for right now. We don't need to see that, I'll just remove that. So back to our Creo Simulate Live, what I'm gonna do is create a new type of study, right? We're gonna create a thermal study in this case. And what I'll do is I'm gonna apply heat lobe to just a small collection of the, the surfaces that are there. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply uh, heat load to those surfaces and I'm going to say let's make that be one watt okay and we'll go ahead and apply that and there we've got our, our boundary conditions applied to that so we're applying a heat load to those surfaces and let's go ahead and say let's simulate that so I can see pretty quickly I mean I get almost instantaneous results back from that uh, let's turn our simulation objects off so we can kind of see through that and see the model so that's a steady state thermal analysis. This is assuming that um, we've reached um, equilibrium conditions, we've applied our heat load, and this is sort of a steady state operation for this model now after we've applied the, the heat and it's you know, gone for a period of time. And you can see that the temperature there is about 142 degrees. Okay, so that's our steady state thermal analysis. What's new in Creo Simulate 7 is the ability to create a transient thermal analysis. So here we'll just hit our simulate dropdown and we're gonna select the transient option and now we can see that uh, we're still calculating here. So notice that this is uh, running out here to about um, 2,700 seconds. It looks like it finally reaches equilibrium. So we can say that our temperature there, we've reached the same thing, but now we have an idea about how long it takes us to get to that steady state condition. So um, that's a, a, a quick example of what happens there with a, a, a transient thermal type analysis. So if we went back and, and said, hey, let's actually go and create a probe at a location here. Let's actually track what happens here. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And we'll save that as a temperature probe there and then close that. Now I can actually graph what happens to that over time. So this is just another option for me as a result of that output. I can actually track what happens to that model of the temperature at that location over time. So uh, the other thing that we wanted to do here is maybe look at limiting the time that we're doing uh, our study. So it's just another option here. Once we've created a transient thermal analysis, then we have the option to set a time limit on that. And in this case, I'm gonna say, let's look at what happens here at say 60 seconds. Right now we've reached equilibrium at uh, 2,700 2, seconds. We're at about 141 degrees, 142 degrees. If I say, hey, I'd really like to see what happens after a minute, right? So it's gonna look graphically the same, but notice here we're at 60 seconds and now my maximum temperature is at 71 degrees. So the, the graphical result might look the same, but the temperature value that's gonna be created or measured at that point is, is gonna be different, right? Because we're actually looking at the, the overall process of that heating up over time and you'll get a different value even though the, the, the fringe plot might look the same, but you, what you're really interested in is the temperature at some set specific time. So that's a, taking a snapshot of, of the model at a, a particular time step in a transient thermal analysis. Okay, um, let's take a look at another type of model. Let's look at some flow models. Uh, so let me open up a model. We'll go here and we'll grab another uh, uh, part here. So in this case, what we'll do is we're gonna look at um, a flow analysis and it's really easy to do. I'm just gonna create a new uh, simulation type here. We're gonna pick on our flow or fluid simulation study. And so the first thing you probably think is, well, how do I track or keep track of the volume that's inside that part? Well, this thing is you know, fairly, fairly intricate on the inside. If we go into a wireframe mode, this is sort of a mixing assembly or mixing uh, module. So we've got different blades and, and items inside there that we're using to kind of stir up the fluid that's inside, uh, inside this uh, assembly. So let's go back and show you how we do this. The flow is gonna be flowing in here and we'll have an inlet here and we're gonna have an outlet here. We're interested in seeing what happens inside of that assembly. So the first step in the process is we need to define an internal volume. So all we need to do is to pick on the surfaces that have there are um, inlets and outlets on it, right? So again, all I did was use the control button, pick on those three surfaces and it automatically, you know, figures out what the inside volume of that is. And it makes sort of a, 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 an enclosed volume inside there for me. So one of the things I need to do next then is to define what fluid am I pushing through there? So I'll just go here and pick on my internal fluid and I'm just gonna right click and say, let's edit the materials. So in this case, we're just gonna use water. So we'll go, but I could you know, add any material that I needed uh, here, no problem. It's just like creating any other material inside Creo. So go ahead and specify that. Now I just need to define my boundary conditions. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pick on the outlet pressure here to define that. We're just going to say that there's no pressure on the outlet side of that. Easy to do that. Then I'm just going to define an inlet flow velocity. I could do this either in a flow velocity or inlet pressure. I'm going to use flow velocity here. We're going to pick that uh, surface. And just like we did with our force application, I have the option to specify either magnitude or direction uh, or directional components. I'm going to pick on directional components and notice that my um, coordinate system here is pointing the X direction would be the, the direction I want to flow that in. So I'll just pick on the X direction there and we'll say that we want to have that move in and, and say five meters per second. That's our flow rate. Then the next thing we'll do is same kind of thing. We'll have an inlet flow velocity here on the top. And same thing I'm going to pick here on that, and my coordinate system for that is going to be uh, telling me I'm moving in the negative y direction. So we'll have that be uh, negative 15 meters per second in the y direction. And then we're also going to apply a temperature condition on that. We're going to apply a set temperature to that fluid here at the top, and we're going to make sure that that's in the right unit system. We'll pick uh, degrees centigrade, and we'll make that be 120 degrees. And that's it. So I've got my boundary conditions defined. I've got my, my flow volume defined. We'll just go ahead and run simulate. And just that quick, we can see the results coming back, right? So I can see the, the fluid mixing through the model and I can see the, the fluid flow through there, right? So if we start to take a look at some of the other items, we can uh, go ahead and do a, a cut plane through the model. So now I can actually see this is sort of sectioning through, right through the middle of the model. So I can see the fluid flow. And again, I've got a little, uh, the ability to use sort of a drag handle. I can pick on that and we'll pick on this guy right here. So I can actually, you know, sort of slice through the model and see what's actually happening at different you know, locations through the model. Right. Additionally, if I want to see the fluid direction through there, I can go ahead and turn that display off and it gets sort of a nice little um, cut plane through the middle, the XY plane of the part or the assembly, and I can see what the flow uh, is going to look like as it goes through the model. You can turn that off. If I wanted to see the, the streamlines through that, I can do that. I would expect to see that that's going to be fairly um, fairly crazy uh, streamlines in there because we expect that because we're designing a mixing uh, apparatus here. So we, we expect to see a lot of turbulence inside there. If I pick on the fluid objects here for that, I can actually drag that out. I'm just going to use the shift button and drag out the, the streamlines there so we can kind of encompass a larger region of that. So that gives us a better idea of what the streamlines look like as they flow through that model. Okay, so again, very easy to do, right? You just define your inlet and outlet conditions, the fluid uh, that you're working with, and uh, temperature conditions as necessary, and uh, it's that easy, and you're looking at results. Okay, um, let's look at, uh, oh, as long as we're, we're here, we'll take a look at uh, different things. We look at pressure as well, right? So um, we go ahead and take a look at the, the cut plane through here. What we were initially looking at was uh, uh, temperature, right? So you can look at pressure as well. It's just a different uh, option for you to look at as you're looking at your results. All right. Let's look at another option here. We'll take a look at, um, let's take a look at the uh, uh, an external type flow. We're going to go here and take a look at the race car. And so now in this case, same as before, I'm going to go to Creo Simulate. I'm going to start a new type of simulation that's going to be our flow simulation. And from here, we can go ahead and define uh, the different items, right? So the first thing I need to do is define where the fluid is going to flow. So in this case, I'm going to create an enclosure volume, right? And this is similar if you've done anything with uh, mold making or uh, manufacturing Creo, right? You, you get this sort of workpiece type thing. And this is going to, you're using this to define um, what the uh, volume uh, of this item is, right? So how big is this going to be? So I'm just going to go ahead and, and kind of stretch this box out. And I'll just give it some set values here. And we'll drag this guy out here. I can use the drag handles, or I can make that be a, a set, uh, set value. And we'll stretch this up here on the top, something like that. OK, so that's the volume that I'm going to actually simulate. I want to see what happens as the race car moves down the track in that volume of air. So same as before, I need to specify uh, the conditions or the, the material that that's going to be going through. In this case, we're going to have that car going through air, it's through the atmosphere, so that makes sense. Just apply that material to that. Then uh, a couple of other things we need to do, just like our fluid flow through the mixer, we need to define our boundary conditions. So I'm going to define the outlet pressure here in the back, and that's going to be zero, right? because we, you know, it's basically behind the car, and we don't really have any uh, way to control the pressure there because it's that atmosphere. 
Then the other thing we'll do is we're going to have a flow velocity. So I need to control or define what happens to uh, the, the front of the car and also the, the bottom on the ground, right? So what we're saying here is we're going to specify a direction for that. And we're going to say that that's going to go in the X direction at uh, 40 meters per second. So we've got a fluid flow that's going uh, over the top of the car, in front of the car at 40 meters per second. Then the next thing we need to do is define our slip symmetry because we really don't have any control over the three sides here, but we want to you know, define that so we can control or sp basically specify what those three surfaces are and how they're re uh, related to our simulation. So I've got the simulation objects turned off, but here's what they look like uh, when I turn them on. I've got my outlet condition here, inlet condition here, and then my um, slip conditions there for the, uh, for the three sides of the box. So that's it. We'll go ahead and run simulate. And we can see it looks like I might have uh, missed a value there on that uh, on that inlet condition. So let's go back and take a look at that again. Let me stop the simulation. And I will go back and check my uh, inlet there to make sure that I'm actually set that up at uh, 40 meters per second. OK gone back and edited the definition of that and I did in fact have that um, set to zero I had the the direction set but no magnitude for that so let's go back and run that again so here now we can see the uh, results being displayed right so now we've got uh, we're looking at pressure here let's look at velocity now we can see uh, just by toggling into the different items here in my legend uh, that's what that will look like on that cut plane and if I go back here to my fluid objects and pick on this we can drag this up and down and actually see what happens as they take that cutting plane and sort of slice through the model and we can see the flow that's going around the vehicle. If I pick on the little hoop here, as you'd expect, I can rotate that. And if we plug in a value for that, let's make that be 90 degrees. Now we can see what happens if I look at the side of the car. And again, I can drag that back and forth to see what's actually happening here as I move that cutting plane through the model. So I can see how that, uh, in this case, we're looking at the velocity of the air moving over and around the vehicle. So let's uh, turn off the cut plane. Let's go back and stop showing the results. Let's, let's look at the streamlines. Now we can see uh, what the streamlines look like as we move, uh, uh, as the car is moving down the track. So I can use the, my uh, controls here again. I can uh, use little drag handles for this. I can drag this guy around and, and sort of manipulate the fluid flow, see how the streamlines actually move around the vehicle. So again, really easy to, to get a, a nice insight as to what's happening in the model. Um, using the, the Creo Simulate Live. So again, for either internal or external flows, really easy to set up, um, uh, look at uh, generating nice results.